Good morning, everyone. It is so nice to see you here. It's a, not a sunny day here in Squim, but it's a wonderful Sunday, and it's wonderful to see your faces. <laughs> um, my name is Clark Reeves, and I'm the worship leader of this service, and I'm up here with our lead singer, Melody Wilson, and, and we will have the pleasure uh, and joy of leading you in our hymns and praise songs this morning, so we really look forward to that. If you've been around here any length of time, you know that we have a brand new or almost brand new director of music, arts, and drama, and her name is Christy Godwin. And today, it's going to be really cool because today she's going to be sharing her testimony with you. I am, if you don't know, I am the elder of worship, music, arts, and drama around here, so Christy and I work together a lot, and Melody too, to, and Kathy to, to kind of put together what you're, what you're experiencing today and at other times as well. So I look around the room, and if we're talking about trusting God, which is what uh, Christy's going to be talking about, I kind of know that there are three basic camps. There's the camp that, oh, yeah, I trust God, I trust Jesus, I'm there, always. Then there's the camp that says, I'm there, and I'm on that road, and I trust in God in the Lord and I trust in Jesus most all the time except for right over here because I'm not sure about him there and I kind of like to control it. And then there's the other group that's coming through the door saying, listen, I've tried everything in my life that I know to do. Nothing's working. What do you have here for me? Tell me about this, Lord. Tell me about this, Jesus. Show me. So, if you're anything like me, you kind of vacillate between groups sometimes, depending upon the severity and what's going on in your life. But the end game, the end game of all of this is to trust the Lord, trust in Jesus, hear what they say, feel what he says, and then look for the direction to go and do that and have the strength to do it. So that is the end result, trusting in Jesus. So now can I get you all to stand in, in uh, which appears to be maybe our last Sunday without being masked again. And we're going to sing out loud because it's nice to do it without a mask while you can. Okay, let's sing. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus.
I know you'll make a way and I don't always understand and I don't always get to see but I will believe it yes I will believe it you make mountains move you make giants fall Yes, I will believe it. You make mountains move. You make giants fall. You use songs of praise to shake prison walls. And I will speak to my fear. Yes, I will speak to my doubt. You were faithful then.
down from glory to wear my sin and share my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah. Praise the one who sets me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. The morning that still the promise, your buried body began to breathe out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that still the promise, your buried body began to breathe out of the sun. No claim on me. Jesus, yours is the victory. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ. My living hope, Jesus Christ, my living hope, God, you are my living hope. Amen. Thank you, Lord. us and you give us uh, things to look forward to in the future but we know that our world is very unsettling these days and and we I especially want to pray for people in in Haiti right now who have just suffered a devastating earthquake and for the situation in Afghanistan Lord these are very complicated situations where uh, your grace is needed Lord your people are, are there in the midst of that so Lord I pray for the, uh, especially the church in and the outreach, and, and Lord, for, for mercy to be uh, evident in people's lives in these tragedies. Lord, we think of our own um, country, our, our state, even our own county, and Lord, we want to trust you uh, for our, our part we play in, in all of those things. I'm reminded of that scripture in Philippians, to be anxious for nothing, and in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, we present our request to you, and, and we, we want to come to you with thanksgiving, knowing that your peace 
your shalom, which passes all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And I think that scripture says so much about what to focus on right now. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, pure, lovely, and commendable, focus on these things. So, Lord, as we, as we look at today, as we think about uh, the things that are said in, in this time, as we look at the week ahead, Lord, help us to be your people who focus on the things you want us to focus on and our lights to our families and our friends. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Some of you have been seated already. Some are still standing. If you would like to greet those around you and give special uh, attention to those who have masks on just to kind of give them a little more space, uh, please do that for just a few minutes. Well, welcome uh, to those on our live stream, as well as everybody here, of course. Uh, my name is Rick Dietzman. I'm the associate pastor here, and I'm going to be uh, giving the announcements. We have a special speaker today. It's Christy Godwin, who is our worship director, and she's going to be telling her story, uh, a faith story, which is just fantastic. So in just a few minutes, she'll be coming up. But I wanted to give you a few things that are going on in the life of the church, as well as some things happening in the town. Um, just for the, the church uh, we have a class uh, that is on God's sovereignty and free will that's happening in the adult portable. It's happening right now at 1015. It's also happening at 1115. And Charlie Meyer, who is one of our elders, is teaching that. So if you've ever uh, wondered about that big topic of how does it work, how does free will and God's sovereignty work together, well, three weeks in a row, uh, Charlie will be unpacking that for, uh, for people. And we'll also be recording that. So if you can't come, we can, you can find it on our on our website. Uh, the other thing is youth and children's ministries are all going on this week. Tonight we have high school, we have the Edge uh, on Tuesday, and we have on Wednesday uh, the, the middle school group is all meeting at the regular times, and we're doing a drive for, hang on a sec here, a drive for school supplies in, I think, out there by the office through August 27th if you want to give anything uh, for our, our kids in our community going to school. The one uh, thing I wanted to do today just to unpack a little is some things that have happened with regarding masks and health, I kind of explain a little bit about that. It just came down on Friday, and I was able to watch the presentation, and, and, and so just want to explain a little bit about how we're, we're progressing and why it's happening even. Um, the rationale for it has been, uh, first of all, you know, we've, we've been through many mask orders and things through this whole season of COVID. And each one's a little different. This one is a local mandate. Uh, it's a bit different than what was done before at the state level. Uh, but the county of Jefferson County and Clallam County, the, the health department, uh, Dr. Um, Dr. Allison um, Unthank uh, is, has, uh, has led that effort. And, and so the reason has been the high case rate in the county, in both Jefferson County and Clallam County. Um, it's, it's gone up five-fold in Clallam County from 63 to 346 per 100,000 um, people, which is a pretty significant rise in cases. Just for a little history, back in November, we had it go up to about 100 really fast, and we had a, an outbreak at the church, um, had several people catch COVID, and we had shut down for several weeks. So um, this kind of thing hasn't happened really since then, because I watch it very carefully since I was part of the original one in the, in the first time it happened. So this is something that um, to pay attention to, and it's also happening in Jefferson County. Uh, it's gone from 47 to 197 per 100,000. And, of course, the reason they're concerned is, is the hospital system becomes very strained if a lot of people go in there. Uh, so that's the reason it's happening, and it's a mandate, uh, and, and it begins Monday. So I'll, I'll just read you the specifics. It's pretty brief and not super specific yet. Uh, it says, everyone age five and older in Clallam and Jefferson counties must wear a face covering in indoor public spaces, regardless of their vaccination status. Uh, and 
This takes effect Monday. It applies to all businesses and government offices within the two counties. Um, in her presentation, she mentioned churches as one of the sources of outbreaks lately, so churches are really not exempt. Uh, you're gonna see it everywhere starting Monday, everywhere you go, Safeway, uh, restaurants, stores. So uh, all of us are gonna be kind of, okay, we gotta adjust. Um, what we've done in the past, of course, with all this, is we run it through our staff and elders to figure out how we're going to, to apply it. Uh, we haven't got a plan yet for shields again and masks for the worship team and all that. Uh, we will be working on that. You can pray for us uh, for, for not only wisdom but also grace because this is a little more intense emotionally this time around, it seems. And, and we really want to be uh, just have the right spirit about it as a church as we go forward. Uh, so let me think anything else on that just because I want to get you up here, Christy. I'm really excited about that. Just, I, I would say as an encouragement, have grace this week. Uh, on a personal note, it's just, it's interesting. My parents are out visiting this weekend. They're from Spokane. They're, they're 80 years old. That's their 60th anniversary. Ah. They're, uh, they're watching on live stream. I think they watched at 9. They might be watching at 10. I don't know. They like me, so they might be watching me twice. And <laughs> but anyway, my mom's immunocompromised, and, and yesterday she, we were over at the Lavender farm she had her N95 on and I was kind of struck like you know I'm going to wear a mask today at church and in a lot of ways it's an encouragement to her it's very personal um, these are the kinds of things when we get into this and it, it becomes a community issue uh, man be gracious be thinking of others through it this whole time and I know we'll get through it together in a lot better way if we keep that focus and Christy uh, wait actually Sally is going to come up and read the scripture and, uh, and then we're going to have you come up and, and, man, take it home. God bless you guys. Good morning. Please follow along as I read from Psalm chapter 33, verses 20 to 22. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we, tr for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Thank you, Sally. Give me a moment to get situated, everybody. Such an honor to speak to you this morning. I'm very blessed that Pastor Scott left me in charge. I hope that's a good thing. No, it is. But I'll, I'll start out by saying I'm not as cool as Pastor Scott, but I'm going to do my best, okay? Last week, Pastor Scott was talking about detours, and this morning I'm going to share with you a bit of my testimony and a detour that the Lord took my husband and I on in our life. But before I do that, I wanted to start out by telling you a love story. Who doesn't love a good love story, right? <laughs> uh, so when I was 20 years old, I went to do a YWAM training school, which is Youth with a Mission. It's a mission school and I went to New Zealand. And a group of us had been talking, all students that were going from America to New Zealand, and Isaac um, was a guy in this group, and he said, hey, let's all sit together. But nobody changed their seat except me. So <laughs> for 16 hours uh, on this flight, I sat next to Isaac, and it was really a great thing. Um, we became good friends, and for the rest of the school, we just grew in our friendship and um, eventually, ultimately, fell in love. So this is where the detour comes in a little bit. We had plans to get married, Isaac and I. Uh, he was living in New Mexico at the time, and I'm from Washington State. And so our, our plan was, after the school was done, we were gonna, he was going to work and then come and ask me to marry him. And we would live happily ever after, all butterflies and rainbows. But life doesn't always turn out as we planned or expect. On the way home from the airport, Isaac was in a terrible car accident. He was the passenger in a vehicle that got hit, and um, the driver of the other vehicle was killed, and Isaac was in critical condition. He was airlifted to the nearest hospital, which happened to be in Lubbock, Texas, and um, he, was, he had lots of injuries. Thank you for putting that picture up. 
He had uh, a brain injury, broken bones, collapsed lungs. And so he was on life support in the ICU. When I found out about this a couple days later, his family said, Christy, we want you to come. We know that Isaac loves you, and we don't know if he's going to make it. So I had $400 left in my little bank account after YWAM. <laughs> I bought a one-way ticket to Lubbock, Texas, and I met his family there. And I was sitting in the room with his family when the doctors came in to give us the, this is what's going on, the update. Isaac had been in the ICU for a couple days now, and he was not improving. I remember the doctor came in and he sat down and he said, we've done everything we can do but he's not responding. And he explained to us that on, there's a scale of cognition, 14 being awake and alive like we are, and zero being dead. And Isaac was functioning, his brain was functioning at a level three, which means it was so damaged, uh, it wasn't even telling his lungs to breathe. And so the doctors advised Isaac's parents to look into nursing homes and uh, because they said he's going to need to be on permanent life support. He will never live a normal life again. So we encourage you to um, prepare yourself for this. And we were all just devastated, as you can imagine. I felt like the floor had fallen out from beneath my feet. And I didn't know what to think. I had this little Bible with me that I had taken on my YWAM journey, and I had highlighted Psalm 60, verse 11, which says, Help us, O Lord, for all human help is useless. And that's truly where we were at this point. The doctors had done all they could do. Um, man had exhausted all his resources. And now all we could do was trust God. While we were in New Zealand, Isaac and I had written this song called For the Dawn, um, taken out of the scripture that we read, that Sally read this morning. Um, Wait and hope for the Lord. He is your help and your shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. So sometimes trusting in our own understanding makes a lot of sense, right? <laughs> like we want to trust in what we can see. We want to trust in what we know. We want to trust the doctors. We wanted to trust um, our money, our resources, our anything. But everything had failed. Only God was able to save Isaac. And so I learned that through this, through this experience that really God was the only one I could trust. He's the only Savior. And so we began to pray. We prayed. We, we called on the church, the church even globally. We had people in Australia and New Zealand where we had just been. And um, I prayed constantly I felt like I can relate to Paul when, when Paul says, pray without ceasing. This was what I was doing constantly. Lord, please, please heal. And I could tell you lots of stories because God heard our prayers and he answered us. I could tell you uh, about all kinds of amazing things that the Lord did, but I, I'll just share this one um, story. As I explained, Isaac couldn't breathe. His lungs had collapsed and he was on life support. And the doctors wanted to make it permanent. They needed to do a tracheotomy and a feeding tube, which would allow him to be on that permanent life support. But Isaac's dad, the man you see in the picture there, uh, he knew his son, he knows his son is a worship leader, and if you have a tracheotomy, it permanently can damage your vocal cords. And so he kept fighting the doctors, not really fighting, but saying, no, 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 we can't do it. Please, hold off. Just give him a little more time. And the doctor said, listen, if we don't do this surgery tomorrow, he is going to get an infection and die. And so they said, come in in the morning, sign the papers, and we're going to have him do this surgery. And so we prayed and we prayed, and we were just like, Lord, please do a miracle. Please intervene for us right now. We need your help. And in the morning, Ivan, Isaac's dad, went into the hospital to sign the papers, and, and a nurse met him in the hall, and she said, you will not believe what happened last night. When we tried to wake Isaac up, he sat up in bed, opened his eyes, and gave us two thumbs up, and then he was out. And we have, you know, now he's trying to breathe on his own, and we've seen what we need to, to postpone that surgery. And if he keeps breathing like this, 
will be able to actually take that breathing tube out today and let him breathe on his own. And so God did that. Only God could have done that. And he, at the end of that day, they did take the breathing tube out. And that was the first step on the journey of Isaac's recovery. Eventually, they were able to move him out of the ICU into a regular hospital room. And Isaac remained in a coma for 17 days. And I say 17 days, it doesn't sound like very long. But when you live it, it's a long time. When I was living it, it felt like a long time. Um, but on that 17th day, we were in the room, a nurse came in, and she was trying to wake Isaac up, and all of a sudden, he just opened his eyes. And I wish I could say it was like in a movie, you know, where they, uh, someone in a coma opens their eyes, and they say, where, where am I? What happened? And they're just like a little disoriented. Um, but that isn't how it really works. When Isaac woke up, he was very confused. Um, the brain injury had been to the right frontal lobe of his brain, which... Um, controls a lot, a lot of very important things. Um, so he didn't remember. He actually kind of reverted back to childhood. He didn't necessarily know who uh, I was. He looked at me like, ah, oh, I'm in love with you. But he didn't know my name. <laughs> so I could tell you funny stories about things he said. Um, he said he called me all kinds of names like Tina, and Grandma Veronica. <laughs> he called me Cinderella which I was like, okay, you can, that one's fine. But, um, yeah, so that was the beginning of his journey of recovery. I'd like to stop here, though, and acknowledge that I know not everyone has this kind of story. Many times, car accidents result in the loss of a loved one and loss of life. And God has a different story for each one of us. And I believe he's still good, and he's still good even through the brokenness. There was one night while Isaac was still in his coma that um, I felt like the Holy Spirit really challenged me, that God really challenged me with this. I felt like the Lord said, if he dies, are you still going to love me? If I take him home, will you still follow me? And that was a very real thing because Isaac was, when he was in the ICU, Every time we got a phone call, I was thinking, they're calling to tell us he died, or they're calling to tell us that things are really bad, come to the hospital now. He was in a very bad situation. But when the Holy Spirit, or the, when the Lord asked me that, I, I felt like I would say what Peter said to Jesus. In John 6, 38, Jesus asked Peter, well, who do you say I am? And Peter said, you're the Messiah. Like, he's basically saying, you're it. You're the one I'm going to follow. And he says to Jesus, you alone have the words of eternal life. And I knew that was true in my heart, that even if we had to walk through this death, I would be devastated. But Jesus is the King and the Lord, and, and I have no one else to follow. And, um, and I'm thankful that he did, he did wake up, and God brought us on this journey of recovery. And this is my second point. God has our best in mind despite loss and tragedy. And I guess I just realized I lost my first point, which, do you want to put my first point up there real quick? Sorry. <laughs> I do have points, okay. Um, <laughs> the first one was trusting God doesn't make sense, but it is a requirement for following Jesus, right? And then my second point, God has our best in mind, despite loss and tragedy. And Scott shared this scripture last week, Romans 8, 28, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose for them. So Isaac was in three different rehab facilities over the next several months, and God continued to do miracle after miracle for us. He truly did. At every, every turn, Isaac was in physical therapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy. He had to relearn everything how to walk, how to talk, how to... The only thing he didn't have to relearn was how to play music, which was pretty incredible. Before the accident, he had been a very um, proficient musician and very talented, and he still remembered how to do that. But, um, and so God healed Isaac and surprised the doctors at every turn. This accident happened in February 2010, and by July, Isaac was able to return home with his family 
and I was still living with his family at this time, just trying to support them the best I could and support Isaac. And so when he returned home in July, um, he did remember me at this point, let me just say, because people often ask, did he remember you? Yes, he did. Um, because he asked me to marry him. And, <laughs> and this is crazy. By the world standards, this, is, this doesn't happen, and this shouldn't happen. And I even had people close to me saying, maybe you shouldn't marry him. You don't know what's going to happen. He has a brain injury. You don't know. Can he hold a job? Will you have a normal life? What if you're just, it's just a bad decision. But I felt the Lord had called me to this, to this journey specifically. And I know that following Jesus isn't easy. He doesn't promise us that things will be easy. In fact, Jesus said, in this world, you will have troubles, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. And so I, I trusted the Lord in this. You can put up the next picture. Yes, this one. <laughs> um, I, when I said yes to Isaac, I was really saying, yes, Lord, I'm going to continue to trust you on this journey of faith. Because I don't know what's going to happen, but I do know that my God is able and he has been. He's taking care of us. Um, we've had to trust God for financial provision, restoration, for health and healing. And he is always taking care of us. This leads me to my third point. Difficulty doesn't put us out of God's will. If you had told me when Isaac's accident had first happened where I would be standing today, I wouldn't have believed you. Because I thought... This, this difficulty has ruined my life. Like, we're never going to get back to where um, we thought God was leading us, right? Nothing good could come out of this. But, in fact, difficulty is what God uses to make us into the people that he desires us to be and, and also to put us in the path where he wants us to be. He never wastes anything. Our limits don't keep us from fulfilling God's will. And so if you have been in the church for a long time, or any amount of time probably, you know the story of Joseph. You know how he was a dreamer, God had given him dreams, um, but his brothers sold him into slavery. And poor Joseph, like a lot of bad stuff happened to him. Bad thing after bad thing, he's accused, he's thrown into prison. But God is still faithful and doesn't leave him. In fact, it was being thrown into prison and all these bad things that happened to Joseph that put him exactly where he needed to be, in the position of authority at the right hand of Pharaoh. And because of this, Joseph was able to um, listen to God and, and save a whole nation. I'll just read a portion of this. Joseph says this to his brothers in Genesis 50, verse 20. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. And so, like I said, um, God has really brought, brought me and Isaac on a journey. And I wish I could say it's all been butterflies and rainbows and wonderful things, but um, it's been difficult sometimes. But God is faithful. And now we are here. We live in Squim. We have a wonderful community, you guys. And we have six kids. I know you think I'm crazy, that's okay, but I still like them, every single one. <laughs> um, God is faithful. And Isaac has gone on to do some incredible things that doctors would be like, no, he, he will not do that. He got his bachelor's degree in graphic design. He served on staff with YWAM for many years. He's taken teams overseas to do missions work. Um, he plays on our worship team, and he's even written his own music and recorded that. Uh, and he's a wonderful dad to our kids. And I'm really thankful that God brought us on this journey. And so I'll just close with this. Maybe God has allowed you to be in a valley. We all have our own brokenness. We all have our own story. And things don't turn out how we plan or how we hope, right? But God is faithful. And I just want to encourage you this morning, wherever you're at, to put your hope again in the Lord. That he wants to answer you. He will never ignore or deny anyone who calls out to him in asking him. Who, whoever puts their hope in the Lord, 
he will answer you and he will help you. So set your hope in the Lord this morning. He is the only one who's truly able to save. Let's pray. Lord God, I do just give you all the glory. I thank you. Thank you that you are mighty to save, mighty to restore. God, I thank you for this church and each person here, wherever we're at. Father, would you speak to their hearts? Would you continue to, to do the good work that you have begun in each one of their lives and bring good like you do out of the bad? We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Christy. That was really an amazing testimony. You know, we all have choice. We all are able to sit through any situation we have happening to us and choose to let it get us down or choose to keep God in the mix and listen to God and pray and try and try and try to do what he wants us to do. I'm afraid we all give up too early a lot of times. We just think, oh, this is too hard. I don't want to do this. When really, if you just hung in there with God for a little while, hung in there with Jesus, the answer was right around that next corner. You just don't know what God is doing. It's a bigger picture than just you. So you got to trust and obey, which coincidentally is the title of our next hymn. So can I get you all to stand and let's sing trust and obey. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sign nor a tear can abide while we trust. to trust and obey not a burden we bear not a sorrow we share but our toil he doth richly repay not a grief or a loss not a frown or a cross but to blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other to be happy in Jesus, but 
but to trust and obey. Yes, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Can I have you leave the words up there of that last verse? And say it with me. This is so important. Trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. I know this might be a scary week. We got masks coming. We're kind of out of control. Trust and obey. Go out there. Have a good week.